All right, everybody, Mike with Hardware Canucks here, and I am back from vacation. I'm rested, and I'm a little bit more tanned, and I'm gonna level with you guys. Before I left on vacation, I swore, after doing that budget CPU cooler roundup, which you can find right up here, I wasn't gonna touch another CPU cooler for a while. Now, when I got back to the office, I convinced myself otherwise, because I said, look, I wanna get something out of the way quickly, get the blood flowing, get sort of like some on cams done, and something showed up while I was gone. And that's sort of like these two guys. These are the Scythe Mugens. And now what no, ends up... Muggin. It's what? Muggin. No, it's Mugen. No, 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 no. I Googled it, I swear. It's Mugen. No, it's Mugen. Cue the Japanese car guy, please. The correct pronunciation, it's Mugen. All right, Snow, so are you convinced now? Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's get on with the, with the review. So... The Mugen series has been around forever. The last couple of years has seen pretty much the same constant design, and that's the one you're sort of seeing here. This is the Mugen 5 Revision B that's out right now. Now, what Scythe has released is this one. This is the Black Edition, and don't think that this is just a blackout version of the current Revision B. There's a little bit more going on here that allows it to have a little bit better performance. Now, these are based on some legendary coolers, and I want to talk all about them and the performance that you can expect from both of these guys right after a message from our sponsor. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. The new Lian Li Unifan AL120 daisy chain to each other for simplified installation and handling connected by a single cable exit for clean cable management with beautiful blade interior and exterior ARGB illumination on both black and white models that are fully controllable through the software for RPM and all the cool looking effects. Check out the Unifan AL120 down below. Okay, with that out of the way, I think that the most important thing of any Scythe cooler is the price. Now, I'm going to reach off screen here and bring this guy in because this is my all-time favorite cooler, which we covered a while ago. This is the Fuma 2. Now, just 60 bucks. For me, everything about this, from low noise performance to the installation to everything else, is perfect. Now, these two coolers over here are actually sort of following in that same line as the Fuma 2. So on one hand, the regular Mugen 5 Revision B goes for about 50 bucks. Sometimes you can find it for a little bit less. Now, the Black Edition tacks on a $10 premium at 60 bucks. But that might sound like a big premium, but it puts it in line actually a little bit cheaper than the U12S, the standard one, and actually $20 cheaper than the Chromax. That, when you're talking about $60 coolers and $50 coolers, is a huge amount of money. But what are you actually getting for that extra cash? Well, of course you get this sexy blackout design, sort of like what Noctua did with that Chromax lineup that I mentioned a couple seconds ago. Anyways, the biggest change here is what I mentioned before, which is that update to the fan. It's still labeled as a Case Flex 120, but instead of running at a maximum 1,200 RPMs that it does on the Revision B, this one kicks things up by a small notch to 1,500 RPM. Now, from a speed perspective, hiking the rotational speed by only 300 RPM might not sound like much, but it results in a pretty substantial CFM uplift and increased static pressure across the entire RPM range. So the Black Edition is technically louder than the Revision B, but it also moves a lot more air. And for such a thick heatsink, air movement is ultra important, guys. But other than that, well, the design is exactly the same as the Mugen 5 Revision B. It has a massively deep fin array with a few strategically placed indents here and there to reduce turbulence. But the bigger highlight here is actually the fins. They're some of the thickest I've ever seen on any cooler. Not like the chintzy stuff a lot of the other companies use, and unlike the Fuma 2, there aren't any sharp edges. Remember, <laughs> poor Eber cut himself on that thing while he was installing it. And let me draw your attention to just one of the small details on here, and that is how Scythe terminates their heat pipes at the top. I know it's a small thing, but little things like this, the quality of that just goes a long way for me. And let's talk about the fan and the way it mounts to the cooler. It does so with your regular fan clips, but they're some of the sturdiest fan clips I've ever seen. Now check this out. This thing does not move at all, and getting them into place is just so unbelievably easy. I wish every single other manufacturer would take some notes here. Another hallmark of Scythe's design is the way they've gone with an asymmetrical layout 
for the entire Mugen lineup. This one has six six millimeter heat pipes that are swept a little bit forward, so the entire thing looks a bit hunchback when you view it from the side. The reason for this though, I mean, it might look weird, but it's pretty simple. It brings the fan forward, so it's right over the mounting bracket and not slamming right into your memory modules. Then there's an indent on the other side to make sure the fin array can clear RAM on quad channel Intel HEDT systems. As for the base finishing, well, it's damn near perfect and slightly convex. And all this leads to a heatsink that's shorter than the Noctua U12S at just under 155 millimeters in height and a bit wider at 136 millimeters. And as for installation, well, what you get is pretty straightforward and the instructions are perfectly clear in the instruction manual. But I really want to give Scythe a shout out for this handy little chart that tells you exactly what you'll need for every single platform. Anyways, there's a backplate and brackets for Intel LGA 1150 series CPUs, studs and brackets for Intel socket 2011 systems, and screws and brackets for AMD motherboards since you'll be reusing the included backplate there. The nice thing is that you'll be using the exact same spacers and screw down nuts regardless of which platform you're on. The simplicity of this mounting is a dream come true. But other than that, you get a tube of thermal compound that's good for two or three applications along with a secondary set of fan brackets which does come in handy if you want to add another 120 millimeter fan sometime down the road but the one thing i actually have to say that i'm happy about this might seem simple to you guys but for me it goes a long way is this it's a handy dandy Phillips head magnetic screwdriver. Now this might not sound like much, but when you're building your first system, you might not actually have a screwdriver that's long enough to install this cooler. As you can see, I mean, that's the cooler height and that's the size of the screwdriver. So good on Scythe for going the extra mile and including something this simple, but this handy in their installation kit. But anyways, let's get onto that installation. We're gonna pop this thing onto an AMD system so I can talk all about that. All right, so on to the installation process, and I'm going to say right away, this is one of the easiest ones that you'll probably ever come across. So first of all, Scythe and their little details. So check this out, guys. Not only are these spacers used for all the systems, but they also got a little vibration dampener on there. So there's no vibrations between these plastic spacers and the actual metal bracket. So let's put these on very, very quickly on this AMD backplate. One, two, three, four. Done, 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 and done. Then the next thing is you take your AMD bracket along with the screws that they provide for the AMD systems, put it through and manually thread it one at a time, just so they start. Then the other one goes on and that's it. And then you screw these down with that screwdriver that Scythe provides. So that is how you put on those retention arms. I'm going to do the other one and we're going to be right back. All right, so now with those installed, all that's left to do is take this cross retention bracket that's pre-installed on the Mugen and position it over those screw holes. Then the next thing you do, of course, is you start screwing it down. Now on one side, it's pretty straightforward as you can see. No problem there. The only thing is that on this side, because of that hunchback sort of look to this cooler, what you're going to have to do is reach directly through one of these holes here, align your screwdriver, and then screw it in. Let's see if I'm actually getting it. There you go. So after that, you're gonna screw it down, and that's done. So let's also now talk about that fan. We can talk a little bit about how well it mounts. So it has the two clips that are installed, and it's already on. Look, totally perfect. The other thing I wanna talk about is right over here, you can see that under no circumstance are any memory modules gonna come in conflict with this fan. Perfect installation, good job Scythe. All right, with that installation out of the way, I guess it's time to talk about performance. And we're gonna be testing at three different levels. We're gonna test at 120 watts, 165 watts, and the big boy, 260 watts. That's where all, most coolers go in the corner to cry. But anyways, I also wanted to talk quickly about what RPM levels we needed to set to achieve some of our results. So aligning fan speeds with decibel readings, and right away you can see the Mugen 5 Black Edition is tuned for silence rather than extreme performance. I mean, it's so quiet, we needed about 60% fan speed just to hit the noise floor of 36 decibels in the area where we test. Even at 100% or 1500 RPMs, it only hit a maximum of 39.8 decibels, which is still 
ultra quiet. And starting with 120 watts, the Noctuas here get great results, and so does the Fuma 2, which is still one of the best all-around air coolers in my opinion. Meanwhile, the Mugen 5 Revision B gets a bit higher results than the Fuma, and overall, it's just as good as the Noctuas. But the Black Edition ends up starting really strong at lower RPM levels, and ends up pretty much tied with everything else, even though it does get a little bit louder than the Revision B. But let's drill down a little bit to see what's happening a bit closer. So normalized to 36 decibels, and you can really see how Scythe designed the Mugens and the Fuma to deliver the best possible temperatures at the lowest noise levels. Every one of their designs keeps up with heat sinks that tend to cost more, but at the same time, this kind of load just isn't enough to stress these higher end coolers. And moving on to 38 decibels, things tighten up even more since we're starting to reach the minimum operating temperature air coolers can achieve on this specific CPU. And at 165 watts, things get a little more interesting, but once again, none of these coolers are gonna end up struggling, especially the Fuma 2, which posts just incredible numbers right across the board. The Mugen 5 Revision B, on the other hand, ends up being a good four to five degrees hotter, so I'm guessing we're seeing the effect of the dual tower, dual fan layout of the Fuma 2. And that fan on the Mugen 5 Black Edition, well, it does make a pretty good impact and improves temperatures by about two degrees over the standard design. That puts it right in line with the U12S in terms of overall performance. Again though, focusing in on low noise performance at just 36 decibels shows exactly where the strengths of the Mugen 5 Black lie. It's a killer option even at this higher wattage, but some of the other coolers in these charts do start benefiting more at a bit higher noise levels. Look, the Mugen still post great results since both of them stick to 65 degrees or less on a fairly hot running 165 watt thermal output. But moving on to 260 watts, and you'll start seeing even some of the best air coolers on the market, like the U12S, start to fail at over 105 degrees, and they need high, high fan speeds just to compensate. The same can be said about the Fuma 2, but moving to just 38 decibels results in, comparatively, ridiculously good numbers. Now, the Mugen 5 Revision B actually did surprise me here too, with some of the best numbers of the bunch, but check out the Black Edition, guys. Other than the Fuma 2, I'd actually argue it's the best cooler here and it costs less than the Noctua's too. I mean, look at these numbers at just 36 decibels. Look, guys, I wouldn't recommend running over 90 constantly, but on this platform, we also have to remember that thermal throttling starts at 110 degrees. I also have to give a huge shout out here to the Arctic Freezer 50. Sure, it's got gobs of plastic and some nasty looking RGB, but right now it goes for just $55 on sale at Amazon US. And even at 38 decibels, the Mugans end up being competitive. And in a group like this, well, that's a huge compliment. It seems their thermal mass is paying off big time. Well, I guess that brings me to the end of this relatively quick video. And I think a lot of you guys are going to know what I'm going to say about the Mugen 5 Black Edition. It is an amazing cooler. It has everything you could possibly want in one of these air coolers. It has a great price, it's got great performance, low noise levels, good installation kit. Actually, it might be one of the best installation kits out there. It is really hard not to recommend it, but the $50 million question, I guess, is would I recommend the Mugen 5 Black Edition over the similarly priced Fuma 2? And the answer to that, it really depends on what you're looking for. Personally, I don't care that there's some silver on here, that there's a little bit of gray and a little bit of black. That, to me, it's not a big deal. Just because the Fuma 2 ends up being that really great all-around cooler that will deliver the best temperatures and even lower noise profiles than any of the Mugens. On the other hand, if you want something that's a little bit more consistent with that matte black blackout look, then absolutely, Mugen 5 all the way. But if you wanna save 10 bucks, then geez, go with the Mugen 5 Revision B. It's an amazing option too. So I guess that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think about these coolers in the comments below. I'm Mike with Harvard Canucks. I'm gonna see you in the next one.